If you've ever been curious about building a community, an online community to bring together your audience, today's podcast episode is for you. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine Lozada. This is a mini series of Everyday Badassery, a podcast meant to help you to be 1% more badass today than you were yesterday. And in this mini series, I'm helping you to be 1% more badass as a creator or a little bit more badass in your business. And so I'm bringing in someone today, all of her info is in the show notes below, who has built an amazing community. This is Beth Santos with Wonderful. Let's bring her in. My name is Beth Santos. I'm founder and CEO of an international women's travel community called Wonderful. I'm an author, a podcaster, a mom, a gardener, a mom of two dogs, also and general, overall, pretty okay human being. <laughs> Beth isn't a badass human being in my book. <laughs> and today's actually a special day because Wonderful is not a baby, is not a tiny community. How old no. does Wonderful turn today? 11 years old today. Which Eligible is Eligible for fifth grade, sixth grade? <laughs> yeah. Actually, will you flex for a minute? Tell us some of the things that you're proud of. That you're that wonderful as a community has been able to achieve. Like this is not a community of ten women, for example. It's fairly large, and they're not located in just one place either. Like this community is is in a lot of places around the world. So flex and tell us some of the things it offers. Um, how many people are in it, and like where in the world are yeah. they? Yeah, we are. So it is an it's international. We have a, we say online, 45,000 women in our network. That's across our email reach. We launched a membership, a paid membership community during COVID. We have 3,500 people in that paid community. And we have local chapters all over the world. And actually, one of my biggest and favorite flexes of all is the fact that just a few days ago, we launched our first chapter in Lebanon which was so cool. They had this huge launch party. They had all of these sponsors. They were speaking about tourism and how Lebanon needs more tourism. And I just like, I love that this mission is just spreading and people are, you know, celebrating wonderful in places that I've never even been to before. And that is just amazing. There's um, dozens of hubs all around the world. So you can connect with people in person and have somebody to eat dinner with we plan trips. We've been to Antarctica. We're planning another Antarctica trip coming up soon. We have what we call global meetups, which are like when a bunch of people descend in one place and we all visit a new place together. We run a creator summit. Um, so we have all different memberships for not just travelers, but also content creators and small business owners and really operate this incredible ecosystem of women helping women in travel. It's a lot of things. And it didn't start there. This is how it no. has evolved over time. Yes. And so for someone who's listening, thinking like, oh, like, well, first of all, join Wonderful. There's info on everything Beth is talking about in the show notes below. But for someone who's listening, that's like, I, I'm considering starting my own community. Bring us back to like where you started. And you, you brought up something important here, which is around mission. And I'm mm -hmm. curious if that mission has shifted over time or like how you thought about that in the beginning versus how you think about that now. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I have uh, I have a business background now, which I actually started. I went to business school in the middle of of running Wonderful. And um, and it's funny because a lot of these businesses, they start from this place of like, I have this big idea and now I need to like find people who would want to purchase said idea. Yeah. And Wonderful always started from this place of community, which was, you know, we started as a blog and then we had like Facebook groups and it was always like before it was a product, it was a group of people all experiencing the same pain points, just the feeling of maybe loneliness when you're um, traveling and not making the friendships that you want to make at home or not having somebody to share your love of travel with and all of that kind of thing. And so we created the space where people could support each other and share their stories with each other. And only after establishing that did we start to then monetize and create a business out of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was a really important thing that we did because a lot of people try to reverse engineer that. And they're yeah. like, okay, I'm going to create this product and then I'm going to build this community around it. But it's not really a community when it's like built around a 
product. You know, it's, yeah. there has to be this like real authentic, rich connection and this real authentic shared pain point that people in this community have. And the solution is for them to come together. And I think that's something that we always began with. And it's given us the space to create all sorts of things that have come out of it and evolve and grow in our own ways. Yeah, even like the list that you shared of all these amazing things that your community does, it's not random. Like, right, they're not all, like these ideas are all over the place. The thread that brings it through is there's community in all of that, which is really yeah. powerful. So obviously it's it's been 11 years. Not everything has gone perfectly. Give us one or two examples of something that you wish you would do differently. Like what's something someone can learn that you might have done differently during that time? I think I spent too much time trying to make things that clearly weren't working work. Mm. And I was, you know, I think over the years, even though I have talked a lot about you know, kind of like doing things the way you want to do. And we talk about this in our community of like, you know, don't listen to other people and do what you want. I think when you're learning, when you're building a business and you don't know, you take a lot of advice, you know, a lot of, oh, you should do this. You should develop mm -hmm. this. Oh, mm -hmm. this is what I think you should do. And, and there were a lot of things that I thought would earn me funding or get me in a direction because I saw somebody else doing it and they mm. succeeded at it that I thought, okay, well, we should do that because that's the direction that this is going or that's where this person who wants to give us money thinks we should go. And I think having confidence in the core of what we were about would have helped me. You know, there are actually mm. things that I'm doing now that we did in the very early days that then we stopped doing because mm -hmm. somebody told us to. And then mm -hmm. we sort of realized in the soul searching that actually that's where we belonged in the first place. And I think over the years that happens, you know, you have twists and turns and you pivot and you learn stuff. But I think we tried so many things um, and, and that's good too. But I think knowing what you're good at and keeping your blinders on and staying, you know, playing your own game and not constantly feeling like, oh, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I'm going to follow what somebody else suggests I do. Really having that confidence in yourself. I think there are things that I would have avoided. Mm -hmm. um, I wish, certainly would have saved a lot of money. And, <laughs> you know, and perhaps gotten to where I am a lot faster if I had just really, really, and it sounds like such a little like Cracker Jack fortune to say like, oh, you know, follow your dreams, but like really, mm -hmm. really kind of understand at your core what you love and what you're good at mm -hmm. and like stick to that. Yeah. Figure out what is your power? What is your North is Star? Your yeah. Why are you doing this? Like what is driving you? Because that yeah. That will take you way further than watching. And especially in this day and age when so much of what we see and experience of the world happens online and through social media, it's very easy to look at other people and be and feel like that is the right path for you because it was the right path for them. But there's always a, another path that you can take. Mm -hmm. What is one thing that you've done you're like, yes, like, we're really glad that, you know, well, maybe it's the it's the sticking to your North Star and your superpower um, and sticking through with community. But like, what's another thing for someone who's trying to build a community where you're like, yes, this worked really well for us. And it's something that every every person trying to build a community should consider. What would that be? I think that the, you know, uh, the thing, one of the things that has worked very well for us, I won't say if it works or not for others, but having an in-person component for us mm. has been very, very valuable. We have a conference that we run every year called WITS, which is a creator summit. We have trips that we run. Um, we have meetups and local hubs, as I mentioned. And there is still something, even running a completely digital business in every other way, there is still something to be said about just being in the presence of other people and the yeah. human side of that and the connection. And that was actually the first thing that tipped me off that like this would be a business. We had a, a fundraiser. We invited a bunch of people that had just been reading the blog and kind of following along. 
And to see all of these women in one room interacting with each other and genuinely connecting with each other, that's when I kind of had that light bulb of like, oh my gosh, we need to enable that because there's only so much, it takes so much more time to make those meaningful connections online, you know, yeah. as much as not saying it's not possible, because it is very, very possible. And a lot of these communities are start from a place online. But you could know somebody online for like 100 years, you go on one trip with that person, you're best friends for life, yeah. you know. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is just so I think that that has really helped cement the the realness of this community for people is the in person stuff and encouraging opportunities to Yes, maybe you're starting from a place online, but take it offline and go somewhere and make those real in in person connections. Yes, I mean that's what life is all about, right? Yeah. Oh, wonderful, Beth. Tell us where can people find your community and where can people find you? All of this is in the show notes. <laughs> Check out the show notes. Also visit she's wonderful .com. That's wonderful with an A. You can learn all about our traveler community. We also have creator and small business memberships. You can find me at bethsantos.com or on Instagram at Maximum Beth. Make sure you check out the wonderful community, this amazing place for travelers to gather and and connect with each other. Like think about how much intention you've heard today around what has driven Beth to do what she has done and the decisions and what what the community offers. It all comes back to her North Star. She was keen on community first, and that's what's helped her to build an amazing community. Connect with her, find all of her info in the show notes below. Connect with me. I'm at Christine Lazada everywhere. If this helped, share it and leave a review. It really does help to distribute it to more people. And in the meantime, go forth. Be badass as a creator or in your biz, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.